So how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Cyberpunk 2077 news video. So there is a lot of information to go over today. With the latest Night City Wire event yesterday, we got multiple new trailers and we got a ton of new information. And with that, the embargo lifted for all these game media outlets to give their previews and their first impressions on their early access for the game. These companies each got 16 hours of early access to play the game. And out of all the articles that I've read, every single one of them have said just amazing things about the game. And we're going to get into some of those articles today in this video. So to start us off, I'm going to go over IGN's article. I'm basically just going to give you guys a summary of what each of these articles said. Some of these are pretty lengthy. But the takeaway from IGN's article, I came away from my 16 hours of Cyberpunk 2077 hungry for more, and with a sense that it certainly had more to feed that hunger. It's rad as hell, a gorgeous world that you could get absolutely lost inside of in precisely the manner you choose to do so. It's certainly not without its rough edges, especially when it comes to the menus, but those blemishes didn't do much to stop what it does well from shiny brightly. Even after two full days, I feel like I've only barely started to see what's here, and it only got more exciting the deeper I went. So the writer for IGN wasn't a big fan of the menus, he didn't like the way that they looked, and he goes into a little bit more detail about that. He said, while the quests themselves are entertaining, the way that they are managed is probably one of the roughest things I saw. Cyberpunk 2077's quest log is a big, messy list, and figuring out which of your many quests to pursue next is a hassle for a few reasons. There's no indication of the XP, money, items, or street cred a quest will reward. No sense of how difficult a quest will be beyond a vague danger descriptor like moderate, high, or very high. Would an actual level number would have let me decide if I should punch slightly above my weight or not. And there's little convenient way to tell you what's near beyond tracking a quest and tabbing over to the incredible busy map to see if the waypoint is close by. Generally, whatever I picked was enjoyable, but if it's going to give me this many things to do, then I wish there were better tools to inform my decisions about the order to do them. Now, the developers have actually said that this is a design decision on their part. This is intentional. They don't want to tell you what the rewards are when you're choosing your missions. They kind of want you to just go out and explore and figure things out on your own. And I kind of understand that. I mean, I personally like some games that don't hold your hand. For example, I've been playing a lot of Demon Souls, and I just love the fact that it doesn't tell you what to do. You have to figure out everything on your own. Uh, and for some players, that's really enjoyable, and that's what makes part of the experience. And for other players, they just want to relax, and they want it to be as dumbed down as possible. And I don't think that's what this game is. I think you're actually going to have to take your time and really do a lot of exploring when it comes to Cyberpunk. But overall, the IGN article was pretty excited for what they got to play. And then moving on to GameSpot. GameSpot said, When I finished my 16 hours with the game, I amassed a huge slate of side missions taking me all over the city. The best part of Cyberpunk 2077 is feeling like a small part of a huge world of Night City, and I'm eager to continue learning about the people who inhabit it. And basically, in the GameStop article, they just went on to say that they were really impressed with the way that the NPCs worked and how the quests worked with each other, and they really liked that your choices kind of had some weight to them. Then moving on to Games Radar, their article was titled 16 Hours with Cyberpunk 2077 and I Never Want to Leave Night City. This article was pretty huge, so a basic summary was that they really enjoyed that your choices mattered. They liked that the NPCs felt humanized. They didn't feel like just regular empty NPCs. They didn't feel lifeless. They liked the extreme attention to detail, but they did point out that the demo was very buggy and that they were counting on CDPR to fix them with this delay. So Games Radar said that Cyberpunk 2077 is clearly a huge undertaking. The density of the game systems is a testament to that, with me only feeling partly comfortable understanding the complexities of the weaponry loadouts, huge skill tree, perks, or my future and cyber enhancements, just to name a few. But that scale does come with some concerns, and while Cyberpunk 2077 didn't present me with any game-breaking bugs, the visual bugs were plentiful. Although CDPR says it's aware of them, I'm hesitant to suggest that they'll all be fixed by the time we all get our hands on the full game come December 10th. But with a game this ambitious and frighteningly huge, I'm in the mind to forgive a few unintentional quirks. This is one hell of a game, a neon soak seduction from the first second. So you can tell that Games Radar is pretty excited for this game as well, but they did point out that there's going to be quite a few visual bugs. So hopefully with this delay, they were able to get some of those fixed. And then going on to PC Gamer, they said, I like how exploration is handled. The map is covered in a mess of icons because it is a modern open world game after all, but most of them are question marks, meaning you won't know what they are until you travel there. This makes spending time exploring the world 
meaningful and surprising rather than just feeling like you're hoovering up icons. And some of the things you encounter which trigger quests both big and small include rogue AI taxi cabs, a body stuffed in a fridge, a talking vending machine, and a mechanical monk. I really can't wait to get back to Night City. From the moment I stopped playing Cyberpunk 2077, it's been rattling around in my thoughts, and I'm already planning what I'll do when the game is finally released on December 10th. So those were four of the biggest top name articles. All of them said that they pretty much enjoyed the game. The only problems that people pointed out uh, were that the menus weren't that user friendly and didn't tell you which rewards you got for completing certain missions. Games Radar pointed out the bugs. But overall, they all enjoyed their experience. They all said that they had a good time. I recommend that you guys go check out the full articles if you really want to get a lot of new information. One of the articles went into detail about all the sexual encounters that they experienced while they were playing and it felt really awkward and it's actually a pretty funny read. But this is great news. This game has been delayed multiple times, so a lot of people were expecting this game to just launch in a complete buggy mess, and, and a lot of people were expecting that this game wasn't going to live up to the hype. But after all these different news outlets said that this game was really, really good, and based off of what it just looks like, I mean, I mean, based off of all the gameplay and all the trailers, it looks like it's going to be an absolutely phenomenal game. And instead of doing an entire breakdown for the trailer, I figured I'd just talk about it in this video as well. There's actually two things that I wanted to talk about from the trailer that I've not seen too many people bring up. And it's the fact that for a brief second, we see that in the trailer, you're actually underwater and you're swimming. So I think that this is a pretty big deal. I don't know why this isn't being brought up more often. Now we did know in the past that we could swim. So this is our first glimpse of actually seeing underwater. And I think this is really cool. Who knows what all is like underwater? Who knows how big the area is? Is it going to be filled with goodies? Like, do you get stuff for exploring underwater? Is there going to be like hidden cyberware or hidden weapons underwater? Or maybe a hidden clothing item or something? I personally hope so. I hope that you do get stuff. I hope you get rewarded for exploring underwater. One of my biggest pet peeves with Grand Theft Auto was that it had the entire ocean, but there was like almost nothing out in it for you to explore. It was pretty much a waste of time for you to go out roaming around in the ocean. So I do hope that there's actually a point to going out underwater. So I thought that that was pretty cool. Then another thing that I wanted to bring up was after looking through the trailer, I noticed that there's this one scene where it looks like it's taking place in a park. So I thought that this was pretty cool that the city actually has some sort of park in it. I mean, based off of everything so far we've seen, it just looks like a giant city that's just nothing but industrial stuff. And then outside of that, it's just a dead, barren badlands. So it is interesting to see that there's actually some trees and some life within the city. I do wonder how big this park actually is. I wonder if it's comparable to like New York's park that's smack dab in the middle of the city. I would imagine there's probably going to be some shady missions going down here because like any stereotypical movie or TV show, anytime there's like a park, that's kind of where things go down. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out because I think that's pretty interesting as well. But that is going to do it for everything in this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. And what do you guys think of all the early previews? Do you think they're being a little too optimistic? Does this make you more hyped for the game than you were before? Regardless, let me know what you guys think. And then if you guys are new here, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications. That way you guys don't miss out on any future Cyberpunk videos. Be sure to follow me on Twitch at SwanyPlaysGamesLive. And be sure to join the channel's Discord. And that is going to do it for me, everyone. And I will talk to you all in the next video. Thank you.